this is the Video Assist 12G by Blackmagic Design. It's able to capture Blackmagic RAW, ProRes 422, DNX HR files, much like the Ninja 5 but with a killer display. As of today, the first generation of the Nikon Z6 is capturing Blackmagic RAW and soon in the second generation of the C family. What's in the box? Pretty much the recorder and some accessories, like the manuals, battery charger, and AC power adapter with proper world plug accessories. Why no batteries? You will have to purchase your own MPF batteries and by the power consumption of this device, I would get some pretty hefty ones. Many of them as well for run and shoot scenarios. That sucks. Yes kid, it's mostly due to the screen size and brightness that it produces. Remember, it's an HDR monitor. <sighs> Let's move on. The Video Assist 12G accommodates to various cameras and devices that make this one of the best monitor recorders on the market. SDI video input and outputs, dual XLR inputs with phantom power, and in and out HDMI 2.0 connectors. On the right side panel, we have the power jack, dual SD card slot, headphone jack, and the power button. Plus, on the bottom panel, there's a USB C connection for an external SSD solid state drive or computer firmware upgrades. It is a touchscreen device with a kicker. It has a built-in speaker. Focus! Turn around! Okay, so the following items are required to capture footage and audio on the Video Assist 12G. An SD card or two. Wait, to handle 4K 60p footage, make sure to buy a V90 type SD card. A USB-C external SSD is not required, but it is an option or a USB-C adapter to SATA for your own SSD. HDMI cable to connect your Nikon Z6 to the Video Assist 12G, and a microphone if you would like better sound. Now that we know what's required, let's hook it up with an SSD and adapter and see what we end up with. Now let's take a look at the Nikon Z6 menu and set it up for B-Raw. Kind of the boring part. Yeah, but once this process is done and you have chosen your frame rate, destination storage drive. Now you can press record. Your files will look like analog footage and will act like so as well. Rewrite uses native ISO 800 and thus the files look very low in contrast and saturation. This may also lead to poor focus performance, so keep an eye on your subject. To make sure your footage is up to par, the Video Assist 12G has all the bells and whistles required to make your job easier. Let's press on the Video Assist menu. You can see peak focus with controls for brightness, how strong you want those peaks to look, aspect ratios, guidelines which you can pair up with a crosshairs or sensor dot with your thirds, false colors to accurately monitor your skins and your 80% gray, your screen contrast for better view. You can also adjust the screen brightness to 2500 nits for daylight use. The Ninja 5 only goes up to 1000 nits as well as your saturation compensation. Actually, if you're new to this recorder and you click the clean feed, none of this recording eight features will work. So make sure it's off. My bad. Nothing to apologize for. This device has a learning curve just like any other new device. Other features within the Video Assist 12G settings are in the setups tab. It gives you the ability to personalize your Video Assist, check the firmware version you are on, tally light on or off, plus more features on the next page. On the last page, it allows you to control your mic inputs and rename your untitled files. Like I said, many features. But let's take it to the start and go to the record tab. Here you can choose your input connection. We use HDMI and the coder we would like to use is B-RAW. Of course, there are other options as well, plus the ability to choose your compression ratio based on the quality or constant bit rate. I would choose quality, but if you're limited in space, go with a constant bit rate. You can also input your 3D LUTs here, although I'm not quite sure if it gets applied or is just for viewing purposes. I thought this device was more straightforward, but the menus are more in depth than I thought. Yes, you need to know all these features, where they reside and how to get rid of them. But once that's learned, it's like second nature, just like editing. So let's go capture something.
So before you open Premiere for the first time, you will need to install the Blackmagic RAW plugin for Premiere to recognize the B-RAW files. So you're saying I can't view my work without the plugin? Well, yes and no. You cannot view any files with the plugin outside of Premiere, but you can install the B-RAW player so you can view your files outside of Premiere and preview them. Moving on, so let's open the files in Premiere and see what we're welcomed with. As you can see, Premiere recognizes this file as if it was ProRes RAW, where all the adjustments required are in the Masters tab within the Effects panel. I thought it was just like ProRes RAW. Not just like ProRes RAW, but like ProRes RAW, with minor different features. As you know, as a firmware 3.20 for the Nikon Z6, Nikon now embeds some metadata into the files for us to manipulate. But that info and access in B-RAW is in the Clips section of the drop-down menu for decode using. Ah. Now you can see everything and manipulate the files as desired. But let's take small steps and stick to the defaults since we are new to this. Your current color science is Gen 4, but let's set it to Gen 5. Gen 5 has better colors and dynamic range based on the readings online. Other than that, I really don't know nor do I see the difference when using. So let's just stick to Gen 5. Okay, next we have white balance. Much like ProRes RAW, you have options to adjust the Kelvin color temperature, but with the added benefit of adjusting the tint as well for your greens and reds. I see the RAW features now. Kind of, Jack. But regardless, B-RAW and ProRes RAW are nothing more than just containers of data. They aren't perfect, nor are they true RAW. It allows you to capture like RAW, but at a smaller scale. So something gotta give. You see, the Nikon Z6 puts out 12 bits. It gets captured as that. The extra 2 bits after 10 bit are let's say multi-dimensional and since ProRes RAW is an Apple acquisition coder it sees ProRes RAW as 12 bits while Blackmagic RAW unpacks its coder as 16 bits it doesn't make it better it's just how it distributes the data different by oversampling it to achieve the higher bit rate the other options are gamma which are manufacturer specific profiles that will pair up best with the 3d LUTs it provided we also have the ISO compensation but for now that item along with Gamma in the drop-down menu is grayed out until further updates to the analyse. Aside from that, we have the highlight recovery. I don't see it do much, but use it to your advantage. So what do you think, Jack? Do you think this will allow you to create better content or at least capture better quality video? I think B-RAW is a great coder, but how does it compare to ProRes RAW? Glad you asked. I think we'll leave that for the next video where we can address formats and file sizes versus quality. I think you can do everything here with B-RAW, but options are always good and without a good comparison, I don't think you'll be able to make up your mind today. Let's leave everything put and come back to it later. I think that's enough for today. <laughs> Let's end the year here. Happy New Year's, Jack. I'm so glad you helped me, kid. Thank you.